Welcome to Real Life 360. Jesus came to give us life. Your real life can be better than you ever dreamed of. I'm J. Anthony Gilbert, and I'm so excited because we've got more with Rabbi Daniel Lappin. You don't want to miss out. We're going to get all sorts of wisdom and insight. If you've got questions and under, you want to know more about money and also marriage, stay tuned because we're going to have a great segment coming up in just a moment. But before then, we have Julie Elias singing home. Sometimes I want to pause my life and rewind, but no, life doesn't work that way. Escape from my frustration, a permanent vacation, and run so far away. I'm not getting any younger, this road is getting longer, no ending in sight. Get off of this highway and quit doing it my way and run to what is right. Focusing my actions, conquering my fear. Start. 
Sydney Grant for Good News 360, where we bring you stories showing how God is on the move. Children around the world prayed for peace in Syria. Pope Francis invited Christians from Catholic and Orthodox churches to join together for the sake of the Middle Eastern nation. Prayers went up for the millions of Syrian children killed, displaced, or orphaned by the country's brutal civil war. Children led processions in war-torn cities like Damascus, Aleppo, and Tartus. And there's many versions of the Bible, but how about this for a translation, an emoji Bible? Christian Today reports the King James Version of the Bible has been translated using emoticons. Emoticons are facial expressions used on cell phones and social media. And get this, the symbol for God is a smiley face with a halo. Marketing for the emoji Bible is targeted towards millennials. The emoji Bible is available on iTunes. And the star behind the viral Chewbacca mask on Facebook says Jesus is her source of joy. So here we go. I gotta take off my glasses for it. <laughs> oh, naturally. Okay, here we go. So, yes! Now watch when my mouth actually moves. <laughs> That's not me making that noise, it's the mask! Here, listen. Candace Payne rose to fame after uploading this video where she's laughing while wearing the mask. The video has been viewed more than 140 million times and seen all over the world. Payne is a worship leader at a church in Dallas, Texas. She told the Christian Examiner the infectious joy seen in the video stems from her relationship with Jesus Christ. Payne says she hopes to use her platform to help young people wait on God's perfect timing to showcase their creativity. That's all for Good News 360. Have a great day on purpose. Well, praise God. I love that. Have a great day on purpose. You know, having a great day is a choice that you have to make. You can choose to get up on the wrong side of the bed. You can choose to get up on the right side of the bed. Make a decision today to have a good day. Well, as you can see, Amy's not here today. She's on a mission trip, but Cornerstone Television Network isn't without talent, so we have Amanda Brocker here today. Hey, on a Thursday. Good to Woo see you. It's a great day. It is. Oh my goodness, that video of the Chewbacca mom, you know she was actually going to buy like yoga pants. Isn't that something? <laughs> and she got discouraged, so she found that in the children's section, but it wasn't for her kids, it was for her. But you know, the amazing thing is, is that when she was younger, she actually had a dream that somehow she was gonna have an audience. Wow all over the world and uh, she's now 37 and because of that video it has gone viral she has an audience she's a worship leader wow. she's wow. a born-again Christian from the Texas area and it's just amazing how God brought that dream to pass isn't that awesome it you know, is and you know God gives us dreams when we're younger and even when sometimes when we're older and there may be right. some of you out there right now that have a dream you know, you have a dream, kind of like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., that you've got a dream that's been within you. And Amen. we've been sensing in our heart that this is the time that's that right. dreams are going to be fulfilled. That's right. That's part of, you know, as the dream center, that's really yeah. you minister to people to get them to believe again. You know, Amen. God's given people purpose. He's given you purpose. That's right. We want you to feel free to call our prayer line at 888-665-4483. We have prayer partners that are just standing by. We want to agree with you in prayer. We want to see your dreams, your purpose that God has for you come to pass. It's amazing. And you know what's really awesome? You don't know when your dream and your opportunity could come. She was going in to buy yoga pants, not understanding that her whole life was getting ready to change. Could it be that this is the season, the time, and the hour that the water is troubled for you? This could be the moment that God is getting ready to do something great in your life. Even as you mentioned, it's time to believe again. It's time to dream again. It's time for you to get up and shake yourself off and get ready for everything that God has for you. I heard a great man say one time that opportunities of a lifetime have to be seized within the lifetime of the opportunity. I believe today this is your moment, your time, and your season right now for God to do something brand new. If you're believing for something great and you want someone to come into agreement with you, just as Amanda mentioned, pick up that phone, dial 888-665-4483. We're gonna believe God that this is your moment, 
your time and your season. It's miraculous. Amen. And how about the Bible for the millennials with all the emojis? You know, just all different sorts of new ways that they're coming about. You have the message Bible, you got That's the emoji right. Bible. It's really neat. There's no excuse. That's right, to not, not know the Word of That's God. Right. That's Praise right. Praise the Lord. He's getting it out there for us. God is making Himself known. You know, in the book of Hosea, I've been meditating on that and just how He pursued Gomer. I encourage you to read that because we, you know, the prostitute that the Lord told the prophet Hosea to marry represents the body of Christ. That's right. And it's like so many times we go running after other things to find our fulfillment when all along we have everything when we're found in him. That's right. And That's you know, right. the end of this story, it's like Hosea, even though the Gomer went away again, he went back and bought her. Amen. He pursues us. He loves us. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. He loves you. And Jesus loves you today. That's right. And we're so glad that you tuned in. And you know what? We've got a great segment coming up yes. with Rabbi Daniel Lappin. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned. There's a lot more coming. Wisdom dealing in finances and marriage. Mm -hmm. It's going to be great. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Interested in short-term missions? Join Cornerstone Cares teams as they go all around the world, spreading God's love in action. Well, if you go on a Cornerstone Cares trip, you're going to meet new cultures, new people. You're going to do some things you've never done before. You're going to have the opportunity to tell people about Jesus. And most of all, you're going to meet Jesus in a new way as you come to the culture that he's called you to. I wasn't sure what to bring, what to give, but the short time I've spent with him, I've realized that it's just, just being here, just showing love. It doesn't matter what type of situation you're in, doesn't matter how much money you make, what you do, God's love touches you everywhere. God can use me and God can use anybody. Join us as we go to San Luis, Mexico this fall. Email today for more information. Cornerstone Cares. We are God's, we are God's love. God's love in action. Here's the latest on Cornerstone Cares, our outreach network reflecting God's love in action. One of our partners is helping a church rebuild in India devastated by deadly flooding two years ago. Bill Richardson and the Southeast Asian Prayer Center is bringing relief to All Saints Church in Srinagar. The flooding killed more than 400 people and destroyed hundreds of villages. The ministry has been working with the church to bring relief to people affected by the flooding. Teams have been handing out blankets made by local Pittsburgh churches. They're also giving school supplies, money for building materials, and food to families still suffering from the flooding. The ministry says it is so grateful for the Cornerstone family support. It's great to see God's kingdom in action. Thank you so much for partnering with us. We can do so much all around the world. Well, the Bible is full of wisdom for our everyday life, but we often need some help understanding these deeper meanings found in the scriptures. Rabbi Daniel Lappin joins us to talk about wisdom for everyday life. Rabbi, welcome to Real Life 360. We are okay. so glad you're with us. Thank you very much indeed. I'm delighted. I've been looking forward. Amen. Well, I got so excited on my way here because, you know, it was like in my heart, your God is my God. And I know that you have so much wisdom to share with us today, you know, just from every book of the Bible. And when I hear you speak, my heart just like gets so excited. So I want to hear your wisdom today that you have for us. Well, thank you very much mm -hmm. indeed. And as, as long as we, we all understand that uh, it's not my wisdom at all. I, I just happen to be blessed to have had wonderful teachers who had wonderful teachers who had wonderful teachers uh, going all the way back. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I just try and convey it as accurately and as detailed as I possibly can. Mm -hmm. Well, you gave me the carte blanche in order to ask you this question, and so I'm going to throw it out there. Yes. Why is it that Jewish people are so good with money? How come that stigma has been sent to them that they're the ones that have it and have the ability? You gave me some great statistics earlier as well. Can you explain what that's all about? Well, yes. Um, and I, I've written several books on the topic. One of them is called Thou Shall Prosper. And the other one is uh, the, ten, the um, uh, business secrets from the Bible. Because it's, I mean, you really would have to be a, a recent immigrant from the planet Pluto 
not to have noticed that right. Jews are disproportionately good with money. I mean, it's not to say there are no poor Jews, of course there are, but um, disproportionately good with money. And, uh, uh, you know, with, with Jews being less than 2% of America's population, you'd expect on the Forbes list of 400 richest Americans, you'd expect seven or eight Jews, maybe. But it's usually about 100. Wow. And so that's a massive uh, disproportion uh, disproportionality. Um, and, and yes, look, um, one has to obviously rule out all the, uh, the, the dumb, racist, bigoted explanations. Um, one of them is that Jews, you know, in the Oxford English Dictionary, the word Jew is actually a verb, as in to Jew somebody. And so the implication is that Jews are good with money because they rip everybody off. Okay. And uh, I actually I interviewed uh, nearly 400 uh, non-Jewish Americans who've done business with Jews over the years to sort of find out whether anybody who actually is active in the world of commercial enterprise uh, does find that to be the case with Jews. And the answer is obvious. I mean, Jews have their bad apples like everyone else, but life's too short to do business with dishonest people. It's just not worth it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, uh, people have had long productive relationships in business with Jews. And when you get right down to it, when it's not racial and it's not genetic and it's not any of these other explanations, such as, for instance, oh, Jews are smart, right? Well, you know who the smartest Americans are? Sure you do. They all work on the faculties of universities. There's nobody worse with their money than those people. Wow. And so being too smart is as much of an impediment as being too dumb. So if you're way down at the, at the non-functional intelligence level, God forbid, you're not going to make money. You know, Forrest Gump was actually a movie. It wasn't real life. Right, right. Um, and over at the other end of the university faculties, they're terrible at entrepreneurial activity. Uh, but right there in the middle is where most successful people are. If we're not of Jewish descent, how do we apply those principles? Well, that's the key thing, yes. Look, if the answer turns out that in order to prosper, you have to be circumcised, then I think many men would prefer poverty. <laughs> but, um, but it isn't anything to do with that. It's, uh, it's the embodiment of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of tips and tools and spiritual strategies embedded in scripture that have become absorbed into the, the, the mother's milk of the Jewish people, and not only in America, but in all places, uh, hospitable and horrible, uh, in all times, good and bad. And, um, and, and that's really what it is. And so obviously, your, your point is well taken. Uh, once it is established that there are no mysteries here and that it is simply a set of spiritual insights and ideas, these are available, not only are available for everyone, but the way I look at it, they are as much the legacy of America's Bible-believing Christians as they are of America's Bible-believing Jews. Amen. So these principles that you apply, I guess, in your family setting, how have, to me, what I hear you saying is that the Jewish people have done a much better job of teaching these principles to the generations. No question about it. So Correct. What, what are maybe some of these principles that we can apply to our lives? Well, you know, right at the very beginning, obviously, is the, uh, is the idea that um, making money is not a result of greed. And having money doesn't provide evidence of what a rotten person you are. Now, this is very difficult to deal with because the entire culture beams out a message that financial success is evidence of you being a bad person. I'm sure wow. you've heard the phrase, the rich aren't giving their fair share. That's what politicians say when they mm -hmm. want to raise taxes. But they don't define who the rich are and they don't define what fair means. Right. Wow. But the idea is to demonize people who've made some money. So we've got to have the right thought so, about money. And so I devote a lot of time in Thou Shall Prosper to helping people get out of the bad mindset. Have you ever heard people speak about philanthropists? And they say, oh, it's so wonderful. They gave a lot of money to charity. It's so nice to see them giving back to society. Have you ever heard that? Right. Of course. All the time, right? Of course. What does that imply that they were doing to society while they were making their money in the first place? Take Ripping them off. Correct. All of this stuff permeates and it's amplified in, in public schools around America. Kids come out of public schools believing that the desire to make money means you've sold out to, to the worst impulses in the human heart. In Judaism, we, we, we're free of all that. 
Wow. Yeah. Now you have a, a book that you said that you're in the process now and you talked about money and marriage and how we, nowadays kids are learning about sex, but we're not teaching them how to handle their money and also how to deal with marriage. Can you give us some insight in maybe what's coming up in that book that you're developing? Well, sure. Look, it's, uh, it's, it's really terrible. I mean, uh, children come out of school knowing everything about sex but nothing about love and marriage. And they come out of school knowing that uh, people who have money are bad, but they know nothing about how to create wealth, nothing whatsoever. They come out of school not knowing how to budget or, or, or reconcile a checkbook. And right, that's an absolute right. tragedy. And uh, it's not an accident that uh, the, uh, the story of the Garden of Eden is essentially the story of male-female relationships and money. After all, this is where Adam and Eve meet up. How do you see money in that? Well, what towards that the end of the story, God says, by the sweat of your brow, you shall eat bread. Now, that's not part of the punishment. That's part of God's blessing. And the, uh, the idea is, by the sweat of whose brow will you eat bread? You your will eat brow. bread by the sweat of your brow. Don't think you're eating bread by the sweat of mine. And what's bread? Well, what is the most common slang term for money in many, many languages bread. and cultures? Bread. Can you lend me some <laughs> dough? Right. Got any bread? Right, right, right. That's where that comes from. Wow. My See, now I always thought that was the product of the curse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, that's in ancient Jewish wisdom, that's revealed as part of God's wow. bl uh, blessing to Adam in response to Adam's atonement for the sin. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's in the book of Proverbs about when you're a hard worker. That's how you get success, by hard yes. by work. By your hard work, not yes. by other people's hard that's work. Right. That, that's very fundamental. You know, as you, if you don't establish ownership right at the very beginning, then the whole system falls apart. You don't have any right to my charitable dollar. Wow. I have an obligation to give it, but I don't have an obligation to give it to you. I could choose to give it to him. Wow. In 30 seconds, we didn't talk a lot about marriage. If you had one point that you had to talk, you can even put it with marriage with money or just marriage alone, one point that you think people need to definitely know, what would it be? That there is no one point. Um, okay. marriage, is for, marriage is like a nuclear power station, except it's much more complicated. If somebody says, what's the one safety rule in the nuclear power station, it's that there is no one rule. You better know them all. Wow. And, the, and the, the same is true for marriage. I get asked that all the time, which is why I was, uh, my heart sank when you said it. But uh, um, no, I, I would stress, please don't think this is, it, it, this is not a game that can be played with a simple slogan, you know, you know the best guys win or anything. No, uh, there, there's a vast body of information and it's sheer folly to go into marriage without knowing this stuff. That's right. Yes. That's right, that's right. Okay, in the Old Testament, which you are very familiar with, is there a book that you would say, read that one, that's like, has a lot of meat in it for us? I really or, wouldn't. No. It's a package deal. You know, I, I once okay. discovered that uh, one of the vital ingredients in women's perfume, mm -hmm. and I, I love perfume, I think it, it adds greatly to life, and, um, but one of the ingredients mm -hmm. is a smelly, sticky, vile <laughs> substance called ambergris. And I once said to a perfume, I said, you know, if I were going to market a perfume, I'd, I'd say I'd leave out that and I'd, I'd sell and say, this is ambergris-free perfume. He said, well, you wouldn't sell any because it's a vital ingredient. Wow. Well, thank you, Rabbi Levin. Yes. We so appreciate uh, your time here. And uh, stay tuned because Don and Terry are going to be joining us in just a few moments to talk about all the God moments here in this Real Life Hour. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Chris Mitchell, CBN Bureau Chief in Jerusalem. Come explore with me the calling. Need healing, a touch from the Lord, or encouragement? We've got a prescription from the great physician just for you. Faith Rx, Cornerstone's special CD of spiritual encouragement and prayer from Don Black and Gary Mitrick. Call today with your monthly gift to the ministry to receive this special CD. Play it in your car or home or share it with friends and trust God in your healing today through Faith Rx. Welcome back. We're here to pray. 
but before we pray, I just what a joy it is to have Rabbi Lappin in our family. Oh my yes. goodness. Oh, mm -hmm. That's the first so time I've ever had an interview with him. Me I got too. to meet him and solve yes. the <laughs> The wisdom. I'm like, there isn't one point. That's it's right. all. You know? That's, and I can I heard y'all saying, Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, you know, because he would say things, you'd be like, oh my, that's so profound. And all you can say is, wow. wow. Yes. That's right. <laughs> Well, God's wisdom is Amen. wow. Mm -hmm. yes. And you know, you studied to show yourself approved. Right. A workman, the Bible says, mm -hmm. worthy, and that you're able to rightly divide the word of truth. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, Pastor Jay, we, we forget how the Bible came to us. And we don't have a long time to talk about this, but the Bible didn't come delivered like this. That's right. It came in, in, in pieces over centuries. We had, to, we had to do a f special series of programs about the Bible. Yes. You know, how it was created, how, it's, yeah, how cool. it came to man, what the chronological order is, right. and what was written and what was oral, and then how it all became written, new and old. The Bible is a, mis is a miracle book, brothers yes. and sisters. Mm -hmm. It's just not a reference book. There's, right. there, is, there is life mm -hmm. in this right. book. And we stand on what is in this book, and deliver it to you. And that's why we we're able to pray. We've got a prayer request. Pastor, what, what, what's your prayer request? Ruth called in. Her grandson is addicted to heroin and has just been sentenced to four years in prison. So she's wow. asking for prayer for him. Wow. Wow. And I have Terrence. Um, he has sewage backed up, which is a big yucky issue. So may God give you wisdom and divine connection for the Right plumber. Who was that? Terrence? Terrence. Mm -hmm. We had that happen to us, Terrence. Man, is it bad. But you know what? The Lord rescued us. Yes. And the, the end of it, it was a rough journey, but the end of it, and Terry can testify to this, it was better than when it started. It was. The process is difficult. I guess that's a story in life, isn't it? it? Is. Sometimes the process is really terrible, but the outcome was so much better. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you that we trust in you. Lord, we trust in your process. Lord, that you are the author and the finisher of our faith. You started writing it, Father, and you've got the final chapter already written, Father. And we trust you that you are the one who's going to make it all come together. And it's a big finish. you got a big finish coming, Father. We pray for everybody who's called in that you'll touch them today, Holy Spirit, in a supernatural way, Lord. We praise you for that in advance. And Lord, we Lord ask for it to happen suddenly, suddenly. in this Pentecost season. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, don't miss tomorrow, Pentecost special. It's going to be powerful. We're going to believe for the Lord to anoint this studio in a very fresh and, and new way. And that if you don't know about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you've heard about it, you've never received it, you're interested in knowing more about it, tomorrow's your day. Write it down. There's an appointment with God tomorrow about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. God's going to move and you're going to be there. I look forward to you being with us tomorrow. That's why we do the program. We love you and we're thankful for you. Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.